Additional caveat, special consideration regarding dental caries and capsular contracture. Is there an association between dental disease and capsular contracture? Is it possible for an oral infection or cavity to cause a breast capsular contracture? Consider the following. The current recommendations are that patients should consider the possible association between dental disease and procedures and capsular contracture. Infection and the formation of biofilms on other type of prosthetic devices such as heart valves are a known risk of dental procedures. Recent research suggests a causative relationship between implant biofilms and capsular contracture. Common biofilm producing bacteria are also common oral bacteria such as Staph epidermis and Staph aureus. The most widely accepted cause of capsular contracture is transient germ contamination of the implant during insertion. Staph epidermis has been implicated as the most common type of skin contaminant as well as a common oral bacteria which also produces a biofilm. Although literature supports a causal relationship between germ contamination and biofilms and capsular contracture, no study has confirmed the original location of the contaminant. Is it oral seeding from the mouth? Or is it an incisional site contamination during the original surgery? Infections of breast implants are described under the general classification of prosthetic device infections. The general classifications are based on either the route of infection or the onset of symptoms. The classification of prosthetic infections according to the route of infection are divided into three categories. Perioperative, which is the inoculation during or immediately following surgery, such as an incision site infection. Hematogenous, which is through blood or lymph node spread from a distant source of infection, such as a dental cavity. And contagious, which is a spread from adjacent sources of infection, such as a penetrating trauma wound or skin or soft tissue lesions. The classification of prosthetic infections according to the onset of symptoms are divided into three categories. Early infection with symptoms occurring less than three months from the date of surgery. Delayed or low-grade infections with symptoms occurring between three and 24 months from the date of surgery. And late infections when symptoms occurring greater than 24 months from the date of surgery. In the case of early infections, Symptoms begin less than three months from the date of surgery and are predominantly acquired during surgery or within a few days following surgery and are associated with highly virulent organisms such as Staph aureus or gram-negative bacilli. With delayed or low-grade infection with symptoms occurring between three and 24 months from the date of surgery are predominantly acquired during implant surgery by less virulent organisms such as coagulase-negative staph epidermis. And in late infection, with symptoms occurring greater than 24 months from the date of surgery, are predominantly caused by bacterial seeding from remote infections. In the case of dental caries, these serve as sources of infection leading to implant infection, capsulitis, and the formation of capsular contracture. A review of the extended TABS data showed the following. 35 out of 652 cases of grade 3, grade 4 capsular contracture occurred between the dates of 2009 to 2013. Five patients from the 2009-2010 period developed uh, cases of grade 3, grade 4 capsular contracture in December 2012 or January 2013. Each of these five cases develop problems within one week to one month of the dental cleaning or dental surgery. This corresponds to a late onset bacterial seeding infection of greater than 24 months and does support the, the um, hypothesis of a dental carry infection rather than an incisional infection.
The three of the five patients who developed capsular contracture also developed it on the ipsilateral breast where the dental cavity, tooth extraction, or the root canal was located. Symptoms developed within 30 days following the dental appointment. And three of the five improved with steroids and antibiotic therapy. A review of the TABS data suggests a causal relationship between the oral bacterial seeding to the implant pocket leading to an inflammatory response which appears to respond to non-surgical management. Both antibiotic and oral steroids seem to reverse the symptoms from grade 3 or 4 to grade 1 or 2. Our current recommendations are as followed. Patients are requested to prophylactically take antibiotics when having any dental surgery, especially in cases of infection. These include orthodontal procedures, such as braces being tightened. This author recommends 7 to 10 day course of either Augmentin or Cipro, with 3 day course prior to the procedure and 4 to 7 days of antibiotic therapy following the procedure. Conclusions High profile and extra high profile implants should be placed in a submuscular plane to decrease the risk of capsular contracture and extrusion. The risk of capsular contracture with high profile and extra high profile implants is not increased compared to lower profile implants. However, the risk of extrusion may be higher due to their higher projection to implant diameter ratios as compared to lower profile implants. Once diagnosed, surgical rather than non-surgical management is recommended. Non-surgical management should not be recommended when high-profile and extra-high-profile implants are in a subglandular plane or when overlying tissue is thin. Surgical management options include capsulotomy, partial capsulectomy, or total capsulectomy. The superiority of total capsulectomy over partial capsulectomy or capsulotomy with implants in a submuscular plane has not been supported by prospective double-blind studies. The infectious hypothesis with bacterial biofilms as a causative agent of capsular contracture is gaining more and more support in the literature. Bacterial seeding, such as with dental cavities, poses a serious risk as a source of chronic implant contamination, especially with patients who have braces or severe dental disease and should be prophylactically managed whenever possible. This completes our lecture for today. Thank you very much for your attention.